Hi, I'm Tony Northrop, and for chapter six of my book, Stunning Digital Photography, I'd like to show you how to take high key photos. High key photos have a bright overall key to them and usually have a solid white backdrop. High key photos are something that every professional or even aspiring amateur photographer needs to have in their tool belt. You need to be able to make a high key photo in a studio or out of the studio. So I'm going to show you both. High key photos have been really popular in portraiture. Instead of using those old like cheesy painted or vinyl backgrounds, nowadays the background of pictures is often just solid white. You also see high key photo in catalogs. High key photos are required for any kind of picture of a product that you're gonna put on Amazon, but even if you're just selling something personally on eBay, making a good high key photo for it will really help you make some more money. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how not to take a high key photo. This is based on my experience of seeing lots and lots of photos people take that they're where they're trying to be high key, but it's not really working out for them. So you see, I have my lovely bride Chelsea back here and she's standing against the white backdrop. A lot of people do this just against a white wall in their house. So I'll take a picture and we'll see how it looks. So those aren't bad, Chelsea's lovely, but we haven't really gotten the high key look that we're going for. Uh, the background is not clean. You can literally see like dirt and texture in the wall behind you. And that's common because nobody has like a perfect white backdrop. Even when you have a professional studio, it has little wrinkles and dirt and stuff on it. Um, you can fix that with light, believe it or not. Uh, another problem with that picture is we have this dark shadow that's being cast by Chelsea and that's because we're lighting Chelsea and the backdrop with the same light. And you can't do that if you wanna get a proper high key photo. So we're gonna do two things. We're gonna move Chelsea away from the backdrop. So go ahead and step forward, Chelsea. Get right under this light there, that's good. Now that we have some distance between Chelsea and the backdrop, we're gonna add some light to the backdrop. Now, because we're in a studio, I'm gonna do this by turning on those two background lights you see behind her. But after we finish with the studio shoot and you understand all the concepts, we're gonna move into a living room so that you can see how it's done in a more casual environment. So I'm gonna use my remote control system here just to turn those lights on. So with those backdrop lights on, I'll take another picture and we can see the difference. So that's definitely a better photo. By moving her away from the background, not only did it allow me to light the background separately from Chelsea, but it also allowed me to blur the background a little bit. And by having a fairly short depth of field and blurring the background, it takes out some of the texture from the wall. So the wall itself becomes less evident. Any little dirt spots on the wall kind of disappear. But I wanna take a look at the back of the camera and show you this picture here. Now, I have blinkies turned on. <laughs> And blinkies will cause any part of the picture that's blown out, that's completely overexposed to blink. And generally that's a bad thing, except when you're doing high key photography, because high key photography, you want that whole background to be completely white and blinking. And we don't have that with this picture. I'll show you the histogram too. So look at the histogram, you can see that the, it spikes over here on the right side, but what we want for proper high key photography is for it to be pushed all the way up against the right side. So the background is good, it's bright, but it's not quite perfectly bright white. Now we have a couple of options at this point. I could just bring that into Photoshop, make some adjustments and make the background completely white. And often that is what you do, but I try to get things right in camera whenever possible especially if you're doing fashion or commercial photography where you're taking dozens of pictures, hundreds of pictures, and you need to process every one. You don't want to have to be pulling a hundred pictures into Photoshop just so you can fix the background in every single one. So it, you can save yourself a whole lot of time by getting that backdrop nice and bright and white. So I am going to raise the levels on those two lights in the background enough to completely blow the background out. So I've raised those two strobes in the back all the way and now I'll take another shot. So I successfully overexposed the background all right, but I introduced another problem. I actually had the lights in the background too high. And what happened is it washed out the whole picture because the background itself basically became a light source. It's reflecting so much light back at the camera that we have this serious backlighting issue going on. 
And what happens if you have too heavy of a backlighting in a picture is the picture starts to lose contrast because all that light is overpowering Chelsea and it's bouncing around inside the lens a little bit and it just ends up looking washed out. And I have a good professional lens on here. If you had a consumer lens, any bit of overexposure would completely ruin it. Um, so un even under ideal circumstances, you can see that having it overexposed caused a problem. So this is one of the secrets of high key photography. You want to add just barely enough background light to overexpose the background, but you don't want to overdo it. That'll also help keep your recycle times on the lights down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the lights down all the way and then I'm going to take pictures until they're just barely overexposed, until all the background is blinking, but then I'm not going to raise it any higher. So I want them as low as possible where I can still have it completely overexposed. So I'll drop both those lights all the way down again. So backing the light back up, we can see that Chelsea's no longer washed out, but the whole background isn't quite blinking yet. So the background isn't quite highly exposed enough. So I'm going to raise the background lights a stop and we'll take another picture. So there we go. By bringing the lights down and then gradually bringing them up and then stopping as soon as I see the whole backdrop blinking, I'm able to get a perfect high key background without causing that low contrast high backlight situation. Now there is one more thing that I'd like to do. Now you can see the lighting on her face, the foreground lighting is a little bit moody. That's because I just have this single beauty dish turned on and that would be great for a low key lighting situation. If you wanted some kind of dark and moody scene, if you're going for like sensual or serious or intellectual, but high key lighting doesn't really lend itself to that. High key lighting is about like happy family, good times, big cheesy smiles and stuff. Uh, and it's also about nice soft foreground lighting. Um, so we want to match the foreground lighting with the background lighting. And whenever I'm doing high key lighting, I also like to have a fill light on and much more even lighting, softer shadows. So I'm going to turn this uh, fill light over here up so that it will balance and eliminate some of those shadows on her face. So now I'll take another picture of Chelsea with that fill light turned on. Now we have a perfect high key background. We have an expression that matches the high key mood and we have nice even foreground lighting that works really well with it. And that's how you do it in a studio environment, but not everybody has a full backdrop and studio lights and stuff. So let's go see how we can do that just in your own home. Here we are in the kitchen and believe it or not, Chelsea and I have actually done impromptu commercial shoots down here because we had a client who wanted their dog in the shot and they couldn't get up the stairs to the studio. So we turned this kitchen into a high key backdrop quickly. Uh, but these bright white Venetian blinds work just fine as long as you have some light on them. So you'll see I have here uh, just a $10, $15 light stand with two flashes attached to it. Now remember with high key lighting, you need to light both the foreground and the background. So this light here is going to go into this umbrella and I'll just pull this sock over the top of it. And this flash here is going to light the background. This flash here, of course, needs to be nice and powerful to completely illuminate the backdrop. Um, and just for the technical folks, I'm triggering these flashes using uh, Yongno YN622 triggers. They make them for both Canon and Nikon and they're super cheap. They're like 45 bucks each. They work really well. And these are my Yongno YN568EX flashes. By the way, I don't get a dime from Yongno. I just like their gear. It's cheap Chinese stuff, but it works great. So save yourself a few bucks. Now, right now I have the backdrop light turned way down and uh, this light is turned up so it'll expose Chelsea decently, but I'll take a shot without that backdrop light just to show you the effect. Spin this around. That's not bad, but just like upstairs when I didn't have enough light on the backdrop, you start to see all the detail in it. Even though this one has way more texture than a proper backdrop, we can still blow it out by putting enough light on it. And the same would hold true if it were just a white wall. 
So I, I want to point out one thing about the flash that I'm using for the backdrop. It's turned on its side. It's twisted vertically. And that's because I'm holding my camera this way. Flashes have a rectangular head. They don't make a round or square shape like studio lights do. They make a rectangular shape of light because they try to optimize the light to be the exact same shape as your camera's sensor. So if you're turning your camera like this, go ahead and turn your flash sideways too. There's nothing wrong with that. So I have uh, remote control capabilities uh, using this YN622 system. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that backdrop all the way up using my camera. So with that backdrop light turned up, I'll just spin this back around to light Chelsea and take another picture. So there we have it, a very nice, clean, high key shot. You might still see just a little bit of detail in the backdrop. If so, you can just go into Photoshop or Lightroom and just heal any spots that you see and they'll disappear completely. You can also try dropping the whites a little bit to make them completely disappear. The gear that I used here didn't cost much at all. These flashes I bought for 165 each. The light stand's like 10 bucks and these things, as I mentioned, they're about 45 bucks. There's a lot of contrast in this shot. The shadows really fall off deeply and that's because I'm using a single light. I could fix that with another light, but it'd be easier just to hold up a big white reflector. That would cost like 10 bucks. Uh, but you get the idea. You don't need a full studio to do perfect high key portraiture. If you like this video, I have plenty more for you. My book, Stunning Digital Photography, has more than six hours of video just like this, and that number keeps growing because I'm always adding new videos to it, and I'll keep updating it for the rest of my life. When you buy it once, you get a lifetime subscription to it. It never goes out of date, so it's the last photography book you'll ever have to buy. Number one rated and best-selling photography book in the world, by the way. I have another book too, my photography buying guide that talks all about all different types of gear, including wireless trigger systems like this, flashes, light stands, cameras, lenses, everything, anything you might want. It'll tell you what to buy and it will save you thousands of dollars. Uh, if you're more of a video person and you're not that much into books, check out my DVD series, my beginning DVD set, four DVDs, more than seven hours of video, and it's a fantastic, fantastic value. No commercials, no like browsing YouTube, trying to sort through the terrible videos to find the good ones. I will walk you through step by step everything that you need to know and you will have a comprehensive knowledge and you'll be ready to go to the next level with your photography. If you like my t-shirt, if you think it's cool, you can buy it. Chelsea designed it. She designed it just for me, but people wanted it. So just go to sdpcommunity.com to buy any of those. And if you just want more free videos, click like and subscribe down below and you'll get notified every time we have a new free video out. Thank you so much.